Sunday, man. I know I'm late. The video came at two six something now. Um, I'm gonna try to get the video out. You know what I'm saying? Seven thirty ish, eighty. Make sure I give you a thumbs up, man. New schedule. Month. I mean, um, Sunday. Two videos on Wednesday and Friday. So, you know what I'm saying? With all this monetization stuff going on, till it's over with, y'all won't be getting no 20 minute plus videos. You know what I'm saying? So, let's go ahead and get into this Mr. Baller video. I know I'm already late. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to be chit chatting. <clears throat> in the Brazilian city of Rio de Janeiro, in a cab, Erica got out of the back seat first and then asked the driver to wait so she could go inside the bank to get a wheelchair for her uncle because recently he had been sick with pneumonia in the hospital. She found one in Not the lobby and then build it back outside. When she got back to the cab, the driver helped her lift her uncle Paulo into the wheelchair, and then afterward, Erica thanked the driver, and then she wheeled her uncle up to the bank, and as she got near the door, a bank attendant came out and opened up the door for them to go inside. Erica smiled at the attendant. Her uncle had been living with her for the past eight months, and so Erica was pretty accustomed to some level of caretaking, but it had gotten a lot harder recently with her uncle being in the hospital with pneumonia, and so Erica was just exhausted. So little gestures like this were very appreciated. But despite her exhaustion, today was a really good day for Erica because her uncle was so appreciative for all the help that he had actually offered to go to this bank with her today and take out a loan for her in his name so she could do some much needed repairs around her house. So Erica and her uncle made their way through the bank towards the front desk and then told the attendant that they needed to see a loan officer. She explained that they had already called ahead and her uncle had been approved for a loan. He was just here now to sign the paperwork. The attendant nodded and then typed a few things on their computer and then came out from behind the desk and led Erica and her uncle to a desk in back to wait for the loan officer. A minute later, when Erica saw the loan officer approaching the desk, she stood up and smiled and was about to say hello, but the loan officer did not smile back. Instead, she just Ooh, glared bitch. at Erica and her uncle in a way that made Erica feel very uncomfortable. And then, instead of shaking their hands, got another the bitch. officer just turned around and walked away. Erica looked around in confusion and then sort of sat down awkwardly, feeling worried and also a little annoyed. She turned and watched as this loan officer continued walking away and then stopped next to some employee. She bent down and whispered something in the employee's ear. And Erica watched as this employee's eyes went wide as she heard whatever the loan officer said. And then this loan officer and that employee, they got up and they vanished into a back room of the bank. So now, oh, they must find the motherfucker. About all of this. She turned to her uncle and she saw he couldn't even meet her eyes. So she reached out and just began massaging his neck and shoulders. A little while later, the loan officer would come back to the desk, and this time she was carrying this huge stack of papers, and she placed it on the desk in front of Erica's uncle. But instead of sitting down and going over this huge amount of paperwork with them, the loan officer just stood there staring at Erica, and Erica stared right back. For about 30 seconds, there was just tense silence. And then eventually, the loan officer pulled out her phone and very obviously started filming. And so now, Erica went from feeling just uncomfortable to feeling sort of afraid. I mean, this was definitely not normal bank behavior, even for a seemingly very real yeah, not. But Erica decided to kind of ignore the weirdness and just get her uncle started. They're trying to rob that motherfucker. But after a few minutes, Erica began to hear the sound of emergency sirens outside the bank. And when she looked up, oh, she saw all these police and first responders running towards her. The video that that loan officer shot that day of Erica and her uncle went viral in Brazil. In this video, Erica is seen smiling and attempting to help her uncle sign this paperwork, and she's obviously holding up her uncle's head. But her uncle is not weak from illness. Her uncle is dead. In fact, he had died hours before Erica had brought him to the bank. Now, Erica later claimed that she had no idea her uncle was dead. However, it was very obvious to everyone around her, which is why all the bank employees were acting so strange. Erica was arrested. No way you could be this dumb, you know? You know, you have some dumb people out there in this world. You know, just fucking dumb. To actually think she was actually going to get away with that and held for 16 days before being released on bail. She faces charges of abusing a corpse and attempted theft through fraud. Her case has not yet been adjudicated. That's crazy. Thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring this. With the football season kicking off, it's the perfect time to dive into the action with my partners at DraftKings, the number one place to bet on touchdowns. And right now, all new customers who bet just $5 will instantly get $250. We ain't doing that. 
But I ain't doing it. And bonus bets plus one month of NFL Plus Premium. Now that's something worth celebrating. Even Seagull Love will be dancing in the end zone. They'll probably get flagged for yeah. taunting. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and sign up using my promo code. That is crazy, though. That's How do I feel about that video? Bonus bets instantly and one month crazy. of NFL Plus Premium hey. after betting only $5. So stay in on the action and use your $250 in bonus bets to bet anytime on touchdowns on DraftKings. Because DraftKings is the place to bet on touchdowns. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun of DraftKings Daily Fantasy and still have the chance to win cash prizes. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use hey, uh, don't they got a wrestling one? And bet just $5 on any wager. Of course, one they got a wrestling one. And $50 I on bet on that. instantly. Okay, back to the stories. I know they got a wrestling where you can bet and shit. A wrestling or a bet app. Y'all let me know what it is. On the night of October 20th, 2021, two young couples were hanging out inside of a little home in the woods in Henderson County, North Carolina. The couples were Rachel and her fiance, Chris, and their friends, Autumn and Jake, whose home it was. Rachel and Autumn were in the kitchen, preparing to dye Rachel's hair over the sink. Jake and Chris were in the living room discussing the very strange sightings of a Black Panther that had been reported all over town in recent days. So North Carolina does have big cats, including Panthers. After all, their professional football team is named the Carolina Panthers. However, the Panthers in North Carolina are typically of the brownish color, not the pitch black so you what? like the panther that was apparently prowling all over Henderson County in recent days. Nonetheless, Chris was absolutely convinced. You can't pay me to go out there. I'm not going to lie to you. I ain't even going out there. You ain't shit you can do with a panther, but shoot it. You fuck your barbecue. <laughs> that he had seen this Black Panther about yeah, barbecue. Ago, when he was out walking his and Rachel's new puppy. He swore the Panther had been following him in the tree line. Oh, no! Puppy, and he had been afraid it was thinking about attacking his dog. Ever since, he told Jake he'd been nervous walking around his property outside. I will be too! So he'd begun to carry a gun for protection. Jake was in the middle of telling Chris that he too was now carrying a gun around for the same reason when they were interrupted by Rachel calling for Chris from the kitchen. Jake and Chris got up off the couch and walked into the kitchen where Rachel told them that she'd been trying to show Autumn a YouTube video about how to dye hair at home when her phone had died. And so she asked Chris if he wouldn't mind going back to their apartment and getting her a phone charger. <laughs> now, obviously, Chris was not thrilled about going into the woods at night, you know, with this panther roaming around. But he loved his fiance and would do anything for her. And he had his gun. So he said he would go. And as Chris I went went. the door to leave, Jake said, hold on a minute. Grabbed his flashlight and grabbed his gun. W friend. He would tag along w and friend. watch his buddies back. The two guys said they'd be back in a minute, and then they walked out the door. A light wind rustled the leaves of the trees as Jake and Chris set out on the little path that connected their two homes. They both stayed absolutely quiet as they walked because they wanted to make sure they could hear w any friend, any indication of this panther being near. I didn't even hit y'all. All anymore. they could hear was the wind, some crickets, and an owl hooting in the distance. But about halfway down the path, Chris suddenly heard something coming from the woods and instinctively shot out his hand to stop Jake in his tracks. They both froze, and then Jake raised his flashlight and shined it at the underbrush where Chris was saying he had heard noise. And for a second, all they saw were green leaves. But then, two eyes opened up and reflected back at Damn. them. Damn! The two men gasped and instinctively reached for their guns, but before they had to draw and do anything, this creature emerged from the underbrush, and it was just a raccoon. Chris and Jake laughed in relief, and then continued walking down the path to Chris's house. They went inside, got Rachel's charger, and then they left and stepped back into the woods. But now, as Chris and Jake walked along this dark path, something just felt different. The crickets seemed to have gotten quieter and the wind had picked up. The owl that had been hooting before must have flown away because it was now strangely quiet. Well, you can feel it. You can feel it. The footsteps <laughs> and the wind in the trees. They were about 40 feet away from Jake's house when they suddenly heard a twig snap to their left. And so the two men turned to face the noise, and as they did, they heard another sound, a low, raspy growl. And so Jake aimed his flashlight at the bush where these noises had come from, and this time it was obvious it was not a raccoon, because the bushes were literally shaking like some enormous animal was inside of them. 
And so the two men looked at each other with wide eyes, and without saying a word, Put the pistols out. knew they were thinking the same thing. Put the pistols out. It's the panther. Yeah. And so the two men drew their guns, and they aimed it at the bush, hoping that this thing would just take off back into the woods, but it didn't. The bush continued to shake like whatever it was was going to leap out. And so the men just opened fire, and they kept on shooting until they heard a new horrible sound. And the second they heard it, they dropped their guns. It would turn out that was not a panther. After Chris and Jake had left the house, Rachel and Autumn decided to pull a prank. They had found some expired eggs in the fridge, and they had decided they would go hide in the bushes near that pathway and pelt the guys with them. When Rachel saw Chris and Jake approaching, she tried to crouch down lower in the bush so as not to be seen, but as she did, she stepped on a twig. And at the same time, in anticipation of their prank, the women started to laugh. They tried to stifle their laughter, but that only made them snort and shake the bush. You can't be my and dog. A combination of noises, the snapped twig, the stifled laughter, which sort of resembled a short, raspy growl, and the shaking bushes, signaled to the guys that this was There's the a prank. Path of this was the panther. Yeah, yeah. If they didn't act, it might attack them. So they drew their guns and they began to shoot until they heard Autumn scream out in horror. Tragically, by the time they had stopped shooting, it was already too late for Rachel. Mm. She had been shot to death. Damn, Law enforcement man. did an investigation into the shooting and they declared it was just a horrible accident. A horrible Everybody accident. Everybody was man. sober and the two men were carrying their weapons legally. And so no one was ever charged with Rachel's death. Damn, and to bro. this day, no one has ever gotten solid evidence that that Black Panther even exists. Oh, man. What the fuck? Imagine. Hey, females. Let me tell y'all something. When shit like that going on, bro, when shit like, you know what I'm saying, we in the woods or something, and, 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 and you know it's, it's panthers and shit out there or, or deadly animals out there, don't come playing because the panthers could have caught them. I mean, the panther could have caught the girls. You feel me? Like, females, when, when there's situations like that, bro, don't play around like that. Don't, please don't play around, especially with people with guns. I mean, it ain't, they fought with the guns, but it's nighttime. You feel me? And, and pranks like, pranks like that is not funny at all. You feel me? It's really, it's really a dumb prank, you ask me. And I'm pretty sure they had enough common sense to know, don't do nothing like that. You feel me? That, that's just common sense. It's, it's common sense, you know? Now I'm sure with no panther, bitch. Don't play with me with no panther. I don't even play like that. On a snowy morning in 1972, 22-year-old <laughs> Sotria Cretsonis sat at her bus stop in Seattle, Washington, adjusting her knit cap against the cold. The hat actually still felt pretty weird on her head because just a few days earlier, she had cut her brown hair super short, and so she wasn't quite used to it yet. But despite that, she loved her new hair. In fact, she deliberately worn this big hat to hide her haircut because this would make the reveal to her friends at school that much better. She glanced up Rainer Avenue for any sign of her bus, but there wasn't one. The city's public transportation system was all out of whack that day because of the weather. So Tria was becoming pretty impatient because now her bus was over an hour late. She'd already missed her first class of the day because of this bus, and now she was in danger of missing her second class. And that's when she heard the beep of a car horn, and a pale yellow Volkswagen Beetle rolled up to the curb right in front of her. So Tria had to squint through the snow, but she could see the silhouette of a man in the driver's seat of his car, and he was rolling down the window of the passenger side and kind of waving her over. Curious, she walked up to the now open window and leaned in, and the warmth coming from inside the car felt great. And this is where Sotria got her first real look at the driver. He was a good-looking guy in his 20s. He was well-dressed, pleasant-seeming, just an overall normal-looking person. He explained that he'd actually been driving on Rainer Ave for a while, and he hadn't seen a bus in a long time, and so he offered to give Sotria a ride to her school. But remember, this is the 1970s, and hitchhiking at the time in America was, was pretty common, especially on the West Coast, where yeah. Sotria was. And so pretty quickly, she agreed to get in, because she knew this likely was her best chance at making it to school for her second class, and she was freezing. After the man pulled back onto Rainer Avenue, Sotria sat back in the seat, enjoying the warm air blasting out of the vents. And as she did, she looked out her window at the familiar route passing by. So Tria was about to apologize to this guy for making him drive so far out of his way when she heard him turn on his blinker. He was preparing to turn right. And this struck So Tria as odd because as she had explained to him back on the curb, her school was a straight shot down Rainer Ave. There was no need to turn. So what was he doing? So Tria looked over at the man 
and expecting him to explain why they were taking this sudden detour. But the man just stared straight ahead. And then a moment later, she heard the blinker turned on again, and she looked up and saw they were about to merge onto Interstate 5 South, oh, Bay, hell no. which was definitely not the way to Sotria's school. It's and now, one. Sotria felt a pang of fear. Wait, she opened her mouth to tell this guy he was going the wrong way, but he cut her off. And he looked at her and he said, you know, it's a terrible idea to take a ride from a stranger. The man kept on talking as he merged onto the highway, but Sotria was not listening at all. Instead, she was fixated on what he was doing with his right hand. Fuck that, we just said. His hand was on the wheel, but with his right hand, he was fishing for something underneath the seat. And so Sotria's mind began to race. Without taking her eyes off of this man and what he was doing, she traced with her hand and felt for the door handle. But she couldn't feel it. And then she turned and realized... There was no door handle. It had been removed. Oh, Just then, brother. the man stopped rummaging around underneath the seat. Oh, God. Whatever he was looking for, he had found it. The man sat partway up and looked at Sotria, with his hand still hidden behind one of his legs, and a determined but emotionless expression on his face. At this point, Sotria felt her heart hammering so hard in her chest that she was worried she might pass out from terror. All she could think about was, what is he hiding behind his leg? What was underneath the seat? But then, something strange happened. The man's face changed from determined and almost cruel to confused. Sotria watched as his eyes darted up to the top of her head. The man told Sotria to take off her hat. And with trembling hands, she did as she was instructed, although she had no idea why he was asking. When bitch. the hat was off her head, the man looked shocked, and he dropped whatever it was he had found back under a seat, and Sotria heard it land with a heavy metallic thud, but she couldn't see it. There was a long, tense silence then, when the man finally spoke, he just said, why did you cut your hair? The man immediately got off the highway and drove fast to Sotria's school. When they got there, he opened up the door for her and told Sotria to get out and said she was lucky. Then he drove away. Sotria didn't report this encounter to police. Oh, God. She was kind of embarrassed that she had gotten into a stranger's car in the first place. And after all, the guy, despite being really creepy, hadn't hurt her at all. And so she basically just tried to forget about it. But, a few years later, in 1975, Sotria was watching TV when she saw a familiar face come onto the screen. She ain't motherfucking man had given her a ride, being led into a courtroom in handcuffs. Sotria dropped everything and turned up the volume. And what she heard made her numb with horror. Because the newscaster was saying that this man who had given her a ride was a suspected serial killer accused of murdering dozens of young women who he would lure into his pale... Tell you about it. I, ain't, I, just, I can look at the car and tell you. Tell you about it. Crowbar or tire iron. And he had a very specific type when it came to identifying his victims. They were young women Blunt. who all had long brown hair. Oh, brown hair. Okay. This man's name Ted Bundy. was Ted Bundy. That's crazy. I thought it was John Wayne Gacy at first. I ain't gonna lie. Me and the whole team at Fallen Studios have created a... I ain't gonna lie. I thought it... I, thought it, I ain't gonna lie. I thought it... When, when he said that the handlebars... But I forgot Ted Bundy did that shit, too. Um, They got Ted Bundy movies and all that John Wayne Gacy movies. That's how I knew all that stuff. But that being said, these stories were crazy. The first story was crazy. No way you took this man to a bank trying to get him signed papers in public. Like, people weren't gonna realize that's, that was dumb. That was dumb. Sex story with the females with the panther shit. That story really got me. Like, bro, why is y'all playing praise? And it's already been and, and the dude had already said he seen the panther. He seen, bro. This is what thing with females. They always think shit a game. Like, fellas, y'all gotta start dating dating serious females or something. Because I know black females ain't gonna play like that. You know what I'm mean? saying? She, my girl would say, fuck that charge. Who would have had to wait? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I yeah, got to Hey, that ain't even about race either. But it's about being stupid and dumb. Because no way you sent your man out there to go do that. And you know it's a panther. And then you planning, you plan trying to pop out on it. That's the wrong type of place, the wrong type of time to be doing them type of pranks on anybody. The third one, third girl. She was lucky. She was very, very, very lucky. I thought it was uh, John Wayne Gacy at first. Not going to even hold y'all. I thought it was John Wayne Gacy at first. But it was Ted Bunny. That's even worse, if you ask me. Um, nigga, what? Hold on. What, nigga? What's that the same? Bruh, didn't they have that shit in the movie? If I they had that shit in the Ted Bunny movie, if I ain't tripping. But he was like, you very lucky or some shit, and he let her go. I think, 
Bro, I think that shit in, in the Ted Bunny movie, if I ain't trip, I'm probably finna watch that shit too. To see. Not the one with um my boy from high school musical. Not that one, I don't think. Is it? I don't know. Wait, I'm on Netflix right now. I'm finna watch it. That being said, see you when I see y'all. Make sure y'all give me your thumbs up. Love y'all niggas. Let's ride.